So let's celebrate the life of marvellous Marvin Hagler, Hall of Fame boxer, best fighter of the 1980s. Unfortunately, on March the 13th, there was a post on his official Facebook page from his wife stating, I am very sorry to make a very sad announcement today. Unfortunately, my beloved husband, marvellous Marvin, passed away unexpectedly at his home here in New Hampshire. Our family requests that you respect our privacy during this difficult time with love, KG Hagler. On that note, let's celebrate and let's kick some facts about marvellous Marvin Hagler. Here we go. Born Marvin Nathaniel Hagler on the 23rd of May, 1954, standing five foot nine and a half inches as a professional boxer. And he fought in the middleweight division, 160 LBs, 160 pounds. His reach was 75 inches. Marvellous Marvin Hagler was south poor, but was a switch hitter. I'll explain more about that later. So... Born in New Jersey, father left at a young age. As a child, his mother moved from New Jersey to Brockton, Massachusetts after the 1967 riots in New Jersey. So Marvin skipped the Montreal 1976 Olympics and turned pro so he could earn money. You probably, you pro you're probably aware Sugar Ray Leonard became a superstar after that Olympics. And that is the ideal route for a boxer is to become an amateur, win some national amateur fights then go to the Olympics, win a medal there, which gives you um, massive star appeal and boost your brand. And then you turn pro and can, you know, get guided, have the right trainers, right managers, earn some big money. But Marvin didn't have that luxury of having um, investors behind him. Like, for example, Sugar Ray Leonard and Mike Tyson. They had lots of, you know, mentors and rich guys behind them as amateurs so they could stay amateur for a certain period of time. So Marvin won the National Amateur Athletics Union middleweight title in 1973 and then turned pro that same year. So Marvin, a technical boxer, very technical, great, um, great stance, shifted his weight really well, didn't miss many punches, very efficient. He was mainly southpaw, which meant he led with his right hand, but he could also fight orthodox, which most fighters do fight orthodox. And Marvin would often switch stance a lot to find openings in opponent's defense. In, Marvin, in Marvelous Marvin Hagler's early career, he worked as a construction worker by day um, for the Petronoli Brothers and fought by night. And he was managed and trained by the Petronoli Brothers. So that meant that daytime he'd go to work and do a full-time to 5 job. And after work, he'd hit the gym, work on his crap. So we don't all get the easy way. You know what I mean? Marvin had it rough. But his, his mind state was implacable. He wasn't going to be stopped. Marvin would only earn purses of a few hundred dollars when he first started boxing. As a challenger, Marvin Hagler, marvellous Marvin Hagler, he fought on the tough Philly circuit, fighting guys like Bernie Briscoe, Eugene Hart, Willie Monroe, sometimes fighting these guys twice. So he might get a wrong decision, get a draw or a loss, he'd rematch him and knock him out. Yeah, he was that kind of guy. His, um, his, his upcoming, going through the ranks, was implacable. He was fighting everyone. He was fighting all the top contenders. So, he, he, you know, he's like a hot knife through butter. Joe Fraser once told Marvin Hagler, he had three strikes against him. One, you're black. Two, you're south poor. Three, you're good. So to me, that kind of means that, that if you're not a brand name boxer, if you're not, if the networks aren't behind you, you're going to find it hard to get to the top. And being a south poor, a lot of fighters, a lot of managers of fighters aren't going to put their fight in of a south poor because there's not many south poor's are hard, hard to deal with. So that would go against Marvin. And then... Um, not only was this South he's very good. Um, in regards to the black bit, uh, I didn't grow up in that era of boxing. I was very young, so I'm not sure how being black would hold him back. That's why I'm aware lots of black, lots of black stars um, were amazing in boxing in the eighties, in the early eighties. But um, maybe you can maybe you can elaborate for me on that one. Okay, when ring announcers refused to call him Marvelous Marvin Hagler, he went to the court of law to legally get his name changed to Marvelous Marvin Hagler. From that point onwards. His first name is now Marvelous. You have to refer to him as Marvelous. Marvelous Marvin Hagler had to request for US senators to inquire into why he wasn't getting no title shots. He had 49 fights over seven years. Now, peep that. Yeah, from 1973 to 1980, he had 49 fights before having a title fight. Most top fighters of this era just about have 49 fights in their career. Yeah, so as, you, as I said earlier, implacable, going through all challenges. Overcoming all obstacles non-stop. November 1979, 
Marvelous Marvin Hagler gets his first title shot, age 27, against Vito Antifermo. This is now his 50th fight. His 50th fight. Remember, um, referee Mills Lane, let's get it on. Well, Ms. Mills Lane thought he won the fight after 15 rounds and asked Marvin to face a certain way so the cameras could take pictures of him while Mills Lane raises his hands as the winner. Many were shocked when the fight was declared a draw. Marvin, Marvelous Marvin Hagler vowed to never leave it up to the judges again. Marvelous Marvin Hagler's own words, um, you can't leave it up to the referee and you can't leave it up to the judges. There's only one way to do it and it's my way. After a free fight winning streak after that fight, Hagler gets another title fight versus Alan Minter in the UK at Wembley. So once again, Marvin Hagler, not the home fighter, going on the road to fight an opponent in their backyard. But before we even talk about the fight, let's look at his activity. So 1979, he loses um, to, well, he gets a draw against Antifermo. So in 1980, yeah, he then fights Lucif Hamani, February 1980. Then he fights Bobby Watts, April 1980. Then he fights Marcus Gerardo, May 1980. That's three fights in one year. <laughs> yeah. And then his fourth fight that same year, September the 27th, 1980, Marvin Hagler chops up champion Al Alan Minter in three rounds. The fight is stopped due to cuts inflicted on Minter. Hagler cannot celebrate in the ring. As UK fight fans throw bottles of beer into the ring, Hagler had to, had to be shielded out of the ring by his trainers, the Petronoli brothers and the police. So Hagler did not receive his title in the ring and Hagler's words in the dressing room after the fight was, I got here the hard way and I'm planning on staying here. I'm leaving it up to my manager and the trainer to figure out who's next. I'm planning on being here for a long time. So unfortunately, Hagler couldn't express that euphoria feeling of winning the title in the ring. But as we, as we know, he did it the hard way and he wasn't going to be stopped. This is Marvin Hagler. A Legend in Our Times Part 1, Part 2 coming very soon. Mark Stern on his boxing. Spread the word, like, share, subscribe. Bless.